Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Really glad that you can be with us online as we take this time to think about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Uh, this isn't a happy topic, and it's not meant to be. We're, we're, we're here to reflect and to remember what Jesus has done for us. We've gone through this entire Holy Week, right? And uh, we started with Palm Sunday uh, earlier this week when you watched the live stream this past Sunday. But today is the day when Jesus would take the final step, the final uh, uh, stage, and give his life away for us. It's something that should be reverently um, thought through and reflected, and, and it's a worshipful moment. But it's not, it's not necessarily this happy moment, even though we know what's coming next. Um, the, the Tenebrae service, which is what we're going to kind of do tonight, is, um, dates all the way back to the early church. And so um, we're going to go through what's called the seven shadows of Jesus' death. Um, we're going to read some scripture. That'll be each stage will kind of uh, have some of these things. It'll have a scripture that we'll read, um, and then we will maybe sing a song. We're going to take communion together. There'll be time for you to just reflect. Um, and then we're going to extinguish uh, one of the seven candles that, that you'll see in a moment until they're all gone. And the service actually concludes in darkness. And it's meant so that we could experience and, and really reflect on what it meant when Jesus gave his life. In fact, even now, we're trying to time this perfectly, so hopefully it works out well. But we have the sunset behind us to also symbolize as the day ends. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. So let's, let's start our Tenebrae service. John chapter 18, verses 1 through 14. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having poured out or pour, procured a band of soldiers... And some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to him, I am he. Judas, who would betray him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what the word had spoken of those who, whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Now the servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their companion and their captain and the officers uh, of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. John chapter 18, verses 15 through 27. 
Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the, to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door. And Peter brought in, and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You, you also are, uh, are not one of his man disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold. And they were standing and warming themselves, and Peter was also with them, standing and warming himself. And the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. And Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask for me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But what if, if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once, the rooster crowed. John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil... We would not have delivered him over to you. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of, everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. 
Now Barabbas was a robber. John chapter 19, verses 1 through 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands. Pilate went out Again, and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he has made himself to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. John chapter 19, verses 17 through 27. So they took Jesus. And when he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the skull, the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha, there they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this uh, inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of, of of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but rather, uh, this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier and also his tunic. 
but the tunic was seamless, woven and woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. I want to take just a, a, a moment to stop really quick, and we're going to enter into a time of communion. Got some really good fancy bread here from Panera. I don't know what you guys got at home, but... Um, it's really important as we think about communion, what Jesus did as he died on this day, what we remember him doing. And why did he do this? Why would Jesus endure the cross? I can tell you what communion isn't. And, uh, and I, I want to make sure that we take time to maybe prepare our own hearts. But communion doesn't save you. Uh, this is just bread. Like I said, we got it from Panera. You know, um, we got some grape juice here in a styrofoam cup. Um, that's not going to save you. This is symbolic. This is to remember what Jesus did. And it is, it is the true sacrifice of Jesus and his actual blood that saves us. Communion or taking communion isn't going to save you. And so I would encourage you, this is for those who are believers in Jesus. If you're watching this right now, and you would not say that you're a follower of Christ, I just want to release you from any pressure that you should take communion. But this is for those who call themselves followers of Jesus. And this is something that Jesus himself instituted just before these passages that we read so far in the book of John. And Jesus, in, in the night that he was betrayed, he actually was with his disciples. And he had broken the bread and he, he, had, he had given it to them. He said, do this in remembrance of me. This is my body that was broken for you. So would you do me a favor? Would you pray with me right now over this bread? Lord Jesus, as we, as we remember this night, as we reflect on this night, the fact that you were crucified, Lord, don't help us forget I mean, don't, don't let us forget, Lord. Don't let us forget, Lord, what you did. Help us to remember. And in this moment, Lord, we want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for what you did. Lord Jesus, you endured the cross because of the hope that was set before you. That verse comes to my mind over and over, your, that scripture that because of the hope that you knew was on the other side, you endured the cross. Lord, I just... I am just so thankful for that. We are so thankful for that. Lord, your body was broken and torn for us. And by your stripes we're healed. Healed of our sin. The sickness of sin that we have. This disease of sin that we have because of you, Lord Jesus. That all can be cleansed. And we can have a righteous relationship with the Father because of you, Jesus. So we say thank you. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus, amen. Let's take this together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the same way, Jesus took the cup.
and he poured it out and he says, this is my new covenant. This is the new covenant in my blood. See, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. And so this is what Jesus was talking about. He was saying that when his blood would be poured out, as we remember, especially on this day, that there is a new covenant that is coming with that blood. So would you pray with me as we pray over this juice? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. Lord, as we think about your blood being poured out for us, it's, 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 it's even hard to comprehend that, to understand that, what that means. But Lord, your love was so great and your mission was so clear. Lord Jesus, that you endured the cross. And not only was your body broken, but your blood poured out for us so that there could be forgiveness of sins. Your blood was shed so that our sins could be forgiven. And what is the appropriate response to that, Lord? There's nothing that we can do to repay you. There's nothing that we can do, God, that, Lord Jesus, that, would, that could uh, repay what you have done for us. So we want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time, for your blood, the covenant of your blood. Amen. Let's drink this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At this time, um, our brother Josh is going to lead us in a song. And so I, I just want to take this time for you to maybe worship and, 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 and take this time to reflect on what we're doing and what we're remembering tonight.
John chapter 19, verses 28 through 37. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full uh, full of sour wine stood there, so they, they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished! And he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate, uh, that their legs might be broken so that, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it was born witness His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones, not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. This time Josh is going to lead us in another song. And just take this time to reflect, maybe to pray, and to think about these stages that Jesus is going through.
John chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Josh is going to lead us in one more song.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me and they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen.